Alrighty guys, the video I've been waiting to do for a long, long, long time. Uh, just a heads up, it's going to be a lot of talking, it's going to be a lot of discussion. Unfortunately, I film everything by myself, so I don't have the ability to do a lot of on-the-water demonstration, but I do have the ability to do a lot of on-the-water catches, uh, you know, some blow-ups and blah, 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 blah. So basically what this video is, is as the title states, Hollow Body Frog Fishing 101. I'm going to talk about you know your gear and talk about rigging talk about uh, ways you can uh, manipulate or uh, you know customize a frog ways to fix a frog because there's too many people that say oh you know likes fell out it doesn't work anymore I'll show you how to fix all that um, we're gonna talk about a little bit about um, colors technique and then at the very end after you listen to my dull and boring voice for about 10 minutes <laughs> We're gonna um, have some footage on the water. I got 10 minutes worth of, you know, big bass. Uh, a couple pictures of uh, some musky. I pulled, I pulled a nice 38, 40 inch the other day on a frog. Um, even caught myself a turtle, so you get to see that that lovely experience as well. But um, yeah, just some good footage. I hope this is informative, and I hope for the beginners out there who are just starting using frogs, this video is very helpful, very informational. And, you know, I think at the end of the day, you'll be able to catch more fish on a frog. So uh, let's get started. So the first thing we're going to talk about mainly is uh, your gear. You know, what kind of rod, what kind of reel. It's always the first thing people talk about. I'm not going to show you what I use just because I'm not promoting anybody right now. But what I can say is, is we'll start with bait casters first because that's probably your main principle. You want a horse, you know, a horsepower kind of rod and reel. Uh, as far as rods are concerned, in my opinion, you should go more than a 6.6. Six. So a 6.6, six, 7-foot, six, medium heavy to heavy. Now, don't worry so much about the medium heavy to heavy part. Just worry about when you look at your rod, it'll say like a line capacity or a weight capacity. You want the line capacity to either say, you know, 17 to 20 pound, whatever, or you want the lure capacity to say a quarter ounce to one and a quarter ounces. Because 99% of the time, if you're throwing a frog, if you're going from like a junior size, like a, like a little mouse here, you're looking at about a quarter ounce all the way up to, uh, you know, like a big, like an Evolve or, you know, a big Coppers or a big Spro, you're looking at five-eighths of an ounce to an ounce. So that's what you want to look for. Um, don't so much worry about medium heavy to heavy, just look for that weight capacity. Um, next thing as far as the tip of the rod, I like to go a little bit, you know, a fast tip, don't have to go crazy with it. Just your standard six six seven foot medium heavy, heavy action rod is fine. Um, as far as reels go, um, this is a little more important in my opinion than the rod, is uh, you want a reel that has a fast gear ratio. So 6.3 to 1 is standard for most a lot of reels. I, I like to throw a 7 to 1 or a 7.3 to 1 just because you're throwing in really thick stuff. And as well as that is a lot of times when a fish strikes it, you have slack line and you want to be able to reel that line up as fast as you can. So a 6.3 to 1, 7, you know, I would go with a 7. If you can't find a seven, or you're not you're not sure, and you just have a six three already, you know, rigged up, throw a six three. Not a big deal. All right. The number one key to frog fishing, as you can see, some of these frogs I, I have tied off or, or untied already, but on the tip, you can see the line. You always, always, always want to throw braid. Um, you don't want to throw mono because there's too much stretch, and you're going to lose a lot of fish. You don't want to throw fluorocarbon because fluorocarbon sinks and this is a top water application. You want braid because it rips through lilies, it rips through weeds, you know, there's no stretch. You want to get that slack up and rip them, you know, and, and that's, it's plain and simple. Uh, as far as weights are concerned, that's really up to you. I'm, I fish in New Jersey, so our standard weight for frog fishing, some will use 65. I, I typically use 50. Sometimes I'll even use 40 just because we don't have the cover that you would down south you know we don't have the really thick mats and if you get buried you know you're screwed I mean the, the, the real thick stuff we have up here is we have a lot of you know a lot of lily pads a lot of reeds but you know 40 to 50 pound test is fine for this area if you want to go a little heavier go a little heavier um, now with all that being said you, I'm getting a lot of people watching this video that'll say well I don't use a bait caster you know I don't like them that is hundred percent fine trust me I started off with spinning gear you know, and I caught so many fish on frogs with spinning gear. No worries. The biggest key with spinning gear is you just got to up your sizes with everything. That's all. 
So get a big capacity reel, something that can hold a heavier test. You're going to want a stiff, stiff rod because you want to compensate for the lower gear ratio on a spinning reel. So my suggestion, this will probably be the only plug I throw all day, um, is I really like ugly sticks. They also have a rhino poles too and you can get them pretty inexpensively. Those are probably your two best bets for a real long, stiff rod. And as far as braids concerned, if you were in an area where you would throw 40 or 50 pound test, bump it to 65 just because you have a little more tension and a little more torque getting them out of the weeds. Alrighty, so now that the gear's talked about, let's talk about uh, rigging and a couple a couple little tips that I do um, as far as uh, setting up to even go out on a lake with a frog. Uh, first things first, we'll talk about knots. Now with braid, if you know how to tie a palomar knot, that's that's the way to go most of the time with a frog. Um, I know a lot of people say they, t they tie loop knots, which I haven't done, but I understand it. If you're a big fan of walking a frog, a loop knot's good. You have a little loop. <coughs> Excuse me. You have a little loop in front of the lure, so it gives your frog a little more ability to swing. Um, the knot I tie 99% of the time because it's a really good knot is a clinch knot. Now, a lot of people say don't tie a clinch knot with braid, but when you're throwing 40, 50, 60, it'll bury itself. So that those are my three knots. Uh, I'm not going to demonstrate how to do them, but I... Uh, yeah, those would be the three that I would go. There's plenty of videos on YouTube that you could find out how to do those knots. Um, one more quick thing before we move on to how to customize a frog. Um, when you're fishing, and this is something I do, you don't have to do it, but I like to tighten my drag as tight as it goes and then crank it back one or two times because you want a pretty tight drag. Basically, you want to treat a frog as far as rigging and setting it up as if you were punching or you were uh, fishing heavy cover with a jig. It's basically a topwater version of a jig. If you think about it that way, your rigging will be much easier. Um, so let's talk about a few things that I do to, let's just say, uh, customize a frog and it's helped me get more strikes. So we have a frog here. This is you know straight out of the package, the Booyah Pad Crasher. As you can see, the legs are super, super long on it. What I like to do is you take the head of the frog, I'm not going to cut it off right now, but you, you pull it right to the eye, right till it covers the eye. Every part of that string that dangles in front of that, the nose of the bait, cut it off. And the reason I do that is because now the legs are pretty much the same length as the frog, and some days you're going to get days where bass don't really want it, and they're short striking, and they'll just grab the tail and pull it under, and you'll miss a lot of fish. If you cut you know that length off and that's a pretty good length to cut off you'll get a lot more hookups um, the second thing that I do is I'll take a tiny little you can get them pretty much anywhere a tiny little uh, worm rattle or you know a glass rattle you can you could even break this or just buy the beads too if you want if that's simpler for you and what you do is is you flip this hook upside down you peel this back and you put it you put it right in there a little quick demonstration how easy it is of course I'm gonna probably take forever to do this yeah I'm not <laughs> I'm not gonna do it right now but uh, you just you just put the you put it in right there flip the hooks back over and now you'll have a frog that rattles Okay, those are really the only two things I do. I know a lot of guys say they like to bend the hooks up, and you can do that too, but I typically just, just do those two things first and you'll get more hookups. All right, uh, next thing we're gonna jump to before I jump to the one thing that bothers me the most about frog fishing, uh, we're gonna talk to you about technique. Now, a lot of people say, you know, where are you gonna throw a frog? When do you throw a frog? Well, the cool thing about frogs are, if you look at a chart of um, their natural habitat, frogs are everywhere in this country. So you can throw a frog literally anywhere. Um, a lot of people say stick to cover. That's true 90% of the time. You could also throw a frog in open water if you really wanted to. But in my opinion, there's really no point because, you know, at that point, you, you might as well throw a spook or a, a Sammy or something else that, you know, a buzz bait that can walk right over the grass. It's just your personal preference. I throw them mainly in weeds. I'll throw them in weed lines, you know, whatever it may be. And the things that I do the most, we'll just take a... Uh, you know, all right, sorry about the camera blip. Had somebody come in. Um, we were talking about... Uh, how to work a frog. Uh, the two main ways I work a frog, if I'm working in really heavy cover, 
what I do is I keep a lot of, uh, I keep my line really, really, really tight. And if you twitch it, it would burst. Instead of it walking, it'll, it'll just hop right across the cover, just like that. And the reason you want to do that is because if you're walking in really thick stuff, there's a tendency that if you swing it too hard, it'll, you know, it'll hit hook a lily pad. It just messes up the retrieve. If you pop it, it'll slide right over top. Um, the only times I really ever walk a frog is if I'm fishing real thin vegetation or if I'm fishing in a pocket. So I'll pop it through on real heavy stuff, and then when we get into a pocket, you'll walk it. And basically the way you walk a frog is the same way as how you'd pop it, but instead you do it on slack line, just like you would a spook or a sammy or whatever, and then, then it'll come side to side. Um, as far as uh, when to throw it, as soon as top water starts working, I'll throw a frog, and I'll throw it until the end of the year. Um, if you want to uh, know more about cadence and stuff, you just gotta practice with it. Um, sometimes they want it really, really fast, and I'll, I know a lot of guys who will walk a bait all the way to the boat. I don't do that. I just change it up based on the type of cover, um, you know, where I'm throwing, time of day, whatever it may be until I figure out exactly what they want. Um, so, oh, one more thing. The only other thing too is, if you are fishing really thin stuff, get a popper frog, because they push a lot of water, and in the thick stuff they get hung up, they're not as effective as a regular streamlined frog, but uh, yeah, if you're fishing open water, get a, get a popper frog. But yeah, those are the two main ways I work a frog. I'll pop it or I'll walk it. Um, tempo, I usually fish pretty slow, but then again, if you're fishing real thick stuff, you want to burn it over. Alright, um, one big thing that I hear all the time, and it drives me absolutely insane, especially on review boards and everything else, is that, oh, this frog is garbage, the legs got pulled out, or the paint chipped off, or it has a hole in it, or, or whatever, and, you know, and then they dump a $10 frog. I mean, some people got the money to do that, but myself, not so much, so... I'm going to show you a, cool, a couple of cool, really little th quick tricks, and it'll save you a lot of money. So, if your legs fall out, okay, obviously these legs don't go to this frog. There is a website, and I'll put a link down the bottom, called nakedbaits.com, and what they make is pre-tied frog legs. And they got a how-to video, it's super easy, it's like, it's like 50 cents a piece, or maybe 80 cents, I don't know. But I mean, I'd much rather spend, you know, 75 cents and just replace, take two minutes and replace the legs than have to uh, buy a whole new frog. All right, the next thing we're gonna talk about is a rip. 90% of the time, if you get a rip in a frog, you can just super glue the rip and it'll, it'll, it'll float. Plain and simple, real easy. Um, the only two times you should ever throw away a frog is if this little weight here on the bottom falls out um, actually three if you do get a rip that's so severe yeah you're gonna have to throw it or you lose it to a big fish or you lose it in a tree or something stupid all right so anyone who says oh my frog is a little bit of a rip I threw it away super glue it you know tape it it don't really matter because at the end of the day color is not important as you can see I have a big bundle of frogs here and we're gonna get to my favorite topic is color people are always like what color to throw what color to throw should I throw green should I throw a funky color what time of day I'm gonna show you the bottoms of these okay you have a white go to the black frog we have a yellow we have a white we have a white okay and then we get to the darker frogs we have black okay you see a pattern you have pretty much black a little bit of white you have black when you're fishing a frog, they do not see the top of the lure. So if somebody says, oh, use this frog, its patterning is amazing, it does not matter. A bass isn't going to freaking stick his head up out of the water, you know, like the damn tuna, you know, from the commercials, and say, oh, this, this fish doesn't look realistic from the top, I'm not going to eat it. All they care about is the bottom of the frog. And what I like to do is on sunny days, white bottom, on cloudy days, black bottom, or if you want to be even simpler about it, just pretend you're Henry Ford, and any color is a good color as long as it's black. That'll simple it down for you. If you're just starting out with frog fishing, get a black, get a white, get a green. You're done. Um, at the end of the day, you will find out that black is the most consistent color. So, you know, that solves it for, for black. 
now or for colors. So now the final thing before I let you go and I show you some of the, the, the good fish I caught so far. So we've talked about rigging, we've talked about gear, we've talked about how to, you know, change a frog, how to fix a frog. We've talked about uh, how to work a frog a little bit. The only other thing is people will go, what's your favorite brand? Now I'm not gonna endorse, but I'll tell you what I like a little bit about each, each type, all right? Um, if you're fishing real thin lily pads, get a Booyah. They're real narrow, they glide through really good. These frogs are not great in thick, thick cover. Um, the hook sets are really good. I, I like these a lot in thinner cover, Booyah. Pad crashers. If you're fishing really thick stuff and you want to have something that'll stay on the surface more, I like coppers. I throw coppers probably 80% of the time. They got a wider frame, a wider body, they walk a little better, they're very buoyant, um, and their hooks are really good. If you're throwing in a lake that's got some toothy critters, got some pickerel, some pike, some bass, you're fishing in tournaments, you know, you're fishing somewhere where you don't want to lose your lure, in my opinion, you throw a spro. They are hands down, in my opinion, the most durable frog on the market. I've had musky tear holes, you know, a quarter of an inch through these and they do not sink. So those are my three go-tos. I do have a couple other ones, you know, I got like the flip and the bird and you know some mice. But again, they all do the same thing. Bass aren't really gonna pick one or the other. It's more or less you want to find a frog that works best in certain conditions as far as action and be, be, being able to work it properly. So again, color doesn't matter. If you're just starting out, buy black, buy white, buy anything white body, white bellied or black bellied. Um, I hope this was informative. I hope this helps you out on the water. If you have any more questions, I'm perfectly content with doing some more videos. And uh, hopefully I wasn't too drawn out for you. And uh, now we're gonna go to some really cool footage of some catches, some uh, some jumps, and a whole bunch of other stuff. I hope you enjoyed, and uh, thank you for watching. There we go. Okay. He slobbed that as soon as it hit the water. And that is why we frog fish. For that reason. Nice little guy. All right, something very important in the world of kayak fishing just happened. Um, when you're fishing real shallow lakes like this and shallow coves like this, um, if you can't stand up, you know, you could say you're at a disadvantage, you know, for sight fishing. But there's more to actually seeing the fish than, to, there's more to sight fishing than just actually seeing the fish and then trying to get them, you know, to bite a bait. Fish giveaway tendencies. You can, if you're looking at the surface, you know, a lot of times you can, you can kind of figure out what kind of fish, see, just like that. It's either a turtle or it's a fish. That's the second time it's bubbled. Yep. That could be a big one. Or it could be a musky. I, I can't really tell. That's a bass, that's a big bass. <laughs> that's a frogfish. First one of the year. Oh, and he's spawning up, so let's just get him, let's get him unhooked and get him back in the water. He's all cut up. He actually looks like he got attacked. About a three and a half pounder. He's got a big gouge on him. I don't know why he's either spawning up or something went after him. There you go, Bubba. You're all right. all right. When you're frog fishing, something I like to do, I just like any other kind of fishing, but what you want to do is you kind of almost want to, you want to look for differences. You got a big pod of lily pads or a big pod of muck. Look for open pockets, look for stumps. You 
you know, vary your cadence. I know a lot of people who have a very standard cadence. Oh boy. And there we go. And don't be afraid to use a big frog <laughs> because as you can see, little bass will eat a big Oh boy. I just had something give itself away. I don't know now if it was a bass or not. Oh boy. Yep. He slurped it. That's a good one too. Come here. Oof. It's a nice healthy fish. Absolutely slurped it. I'd say two and a half, maybe. Nice, nice frogfish. We'll get him back in the water. on a frog big big fish if I can keep them on <laughs> this is a six pounder or bigger stay on oh my goodness I love Oxford Lake oh wow 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 I've got my scale That's how a bass, that's a donkey. That's probably a six pounder. Oh, sorry. Look at that fish. Let's get a weight on him real quick and get him back in the water. Where is my damn scale? Of course, it's not in here. Oh, you gotta be kidding me. Well, I don't have my scale in here. But what we can do, we can get them measured. I do have Implement. Let me get the hook out. Okay. And let's see. He is. Come here. Tail. About 20 inches, so. Twenty by seven. So twenty by seven inches. Get him back in the water. I'd say five, six. And this is the way we end our day. Set the hook on a damn snapping turtle. Come here. Let's get this taken care of.
wonderful. We're gonna have to beach them. So I can't get a stick or something. Absolutely typical. You little dick, come here. This is nothing, something you never want to have happen. All right, let's get try to get the hook out. 